Uh, well, you know, I, I think the connective tissue, I, th I think, that joins us uh, together really is the fact that our shared woundedness. You know, at Homeboy Industries, I'm not the great healer, and that gang member over there is in need of my exquisite healing. You know, the truth be told, we're, we're all a cry for help. We're all in need of healing. And the truth is, unless we welcome our own brokenness, we will have a tendency to despise the wounded. And, uh, and I can think of no other obstacle greater than that uh, to achieving this kind of kinship that Mark is talking about. Uh, we've forgotten that we belong to each other, as Mother Teresa used to say. And so how do we stand against forgetting that, and how do we dismantle the barriers that exclude and enlarge the circle of compassion so that nobody is standing outside of it? And uh, I, I knew a homie named Jermaine who came into me not long ago into my office. He's about 35 years old, gang member, been to prison, and he had made this discovery that day. He retrieved a memory that he had never really uh, looked at before, that when he was nine, he was in his bedroom, and his mother came in and opened the door and the only thing that illuminated her was this hallway light, and she was standing in the doorway when he could kind of bring his eyes to focus. He saw that she had very deeply and profoundly slit her wrists, and blood was coursing onto the floor. And she looked at her nine-year-old son, and she said, see what you made me do. And the very next day, he was taken from her care and put in, foster, in a foster home. Her, his other two sibs weren't, only him. And uh, there he grew up and he joined a gang at 13 and at 17 he ended up being raised from that moment forward by the prison system. But his discovery that day, uh, he's a trainee at Homeboy Industries, he said to me, I realized today that I had preferred my rage to my shame. And so for the first time in his life, he was able to forgive his mother for having been mentally ill and finally forgive himself for having once been a nine-year-old boy. Healing is what it's about because in the end, uh, it's the wholeness to which we're all called, uh, the God we all believe in, the God who is too busy loving us to have any time left, the God who loves us without measure and without regret, the God who is compassionate, loving kindness, and all God, that God is asking of us is to be in the world who God is and our connective tissue is our shared wound. And unless we welcome our own brokenness, we will tend to despise the broken. And uh, kinship is the whole thing. Because no kinship, no peace, no kinship, no justice. No matter how singularly focused we may well be on those worthy goals, they actually can't happen unless there's some undergirding sense that we belong to each other. Well, that was one of um, Rabbi Heschel's, um, the main thrust of his thought and his, his thinking and his writing. And, and I'm struck because that's the thing. And, and what I'm concerned about with everybody here is that we're still not talking about the wounds. And we're not hearing our, the wounds of somebody else with an openness and with a love. That we don't, we're, we're too busy trying to be right. We, we need to have this or that, the either or. And for me, as you were talking, I, I was crying for that nine-year-old boy. I was crying for that 35-year-old man. I was crying for, for, I was crying for me when I was nine. I was crying for me when I was 35 and I understood him. 
Not that I had the same exact experience. And I understand your, your love. And I understand that we have to do it. We are the people that God has chosen to bring about the revolution that started with Judaism and has continued with organized religion ever since. This revolution that says we can love each other. A dear friend of ours, as, as most of you know, Dr. Garrett O'Connor passed away this past month. Now, Garrett used to come here. He would come on Yom Kippur, and he would fast the entire day, and he would be with us. And Garrett and I spoke often, and he was an Irish Catholic, maybe a little bit lapsed in, as a Catholic. I'm not quite sure. It's been rumored, right, Fanula? But we found the ways through brokenness to see each other, yet too many of us are still trying to put on the suits, the armor. We're trying to do it through all different ways, but the truth is all of us are broken. If we've suffered a loss in our lives, we're broken. If we've had a disappointment in our lives, we're broken. And what Father G is telling me is that I can't hide behind it. I can't deny it anymore. And neither can you. We have an opportunity. We have an opportunity because there's lawyers, there's entertainment, there's business people, there's drug addicts, there's ex-cons. <clears throat> there's alcoholics. I fit a lot of those categories. And all of us are broken. And I'm concerned, I'm scared to death that we're gonna try and medicate our brokenness, that we're gonna try and hide from it, we're gonna despise the other. When, when Father Greg and I talked three years ago, I looked up the word for redemption in Hebrew, ga'al, and, and as we spoke that day, it means redeem and act as a kinsman. So how can you expect redemption if you don't act as a kinsman towards people.